Marsilio Facino humbly commends himself to his father and Lord in Christ, his eminence Giovanni, Cardinal of Aragon, son of his Serene Highness, King Ferdinand. Reverend Father, the blessed King Alfonso, your grandfather, recently uttered from heaven a prophecy in the language of angels for your blessed father, King Ferdinand. Marsilio Ficino, caught up by some spirit, was there. He heard and remembered that prophecy uttered by King Alfonso in the language of the angels. Today, he has translated it for you into the language of men with this advice. First, please read it yourself, then send it to His Serene Highness, your father, so that what Marsilio recently understood from Alfonso, with the eyes and the ears of the mind alone, he may through our care receive with the ears and the eyes of the body as well. Although such a prophecy is going to appear in the exalted presence of a royal cardinal and his serene majesty himself, let no one be surprised that it enters without any human adornment for trying to put human clothes on what is vested with the splendor of the Divine Son, the highest truth, is in my opinion like covering the pure light of the sun with a thick dark cloud. I would commend our Archbishop of Amalfi to you, your father, for he deserves commending far more than anyone. But I know that he justly carries such authority with you that it is he who will commend to you not only his Marsilio, but frequently many others as well. The 28th of February, 1479, Florence. A prophecy of King Alfonso to King Ferdinand, first arising between them in the angelic tongue, and later translated into human language by Marsilio Ficino of Florence. The blessed King Alfonso joyfully greets his son, the blessed King Ferdinand, formerly the guardian of peace, but now its author. In that same peace, Alfonso foretells true salvation, certain victory, undimmed glory, and joy without limit. The Descent of Souls why are you so amazed, my son? Why so terrified? Whenever I please, I fly here as easily and as graciously as the rays of the stars and the sun, which are continually coming down to reach you. When the rays of the stars are sent down to you, do they not leave their source? Nor do celestial intelligences leave the celestial realm when they come down to inspire you. Consider, I beseech you, my dearest son, how the dwellers in heaven rejoice in the celestial food of peace. For as soon as you began to consider the complete restoration of peace, which has been disturbed for so long by a hostile fate, I immediately came straight here, enticed solely by this thought of yours, as by the food sweetest to those above. Therefore, banish amazement and fear, be still and listen attentively to this prophecy from heaven, and keep what you hear deep in your heart. How pleasing is peace to those above! My beloved son, so far you have heard nothing about my destiny nor have you ever clearly understood your own. But today, not only as the guardian of peace, which you already were, but also as the great author of peace, you have now become worthy in the judgment of the celestials to have the halls of mighty Olympus thrown open for you and to have revealed to you there the most beautiful order of providence and thence the harmonious procession of the fates. The Divine Mind 
Now, Ferdinand, leaving behind the senses, turn your mind back onto itself through the full circle of self-examination. Leaving the body and turn your mind into itself, you will at once see that it is an incorporeal sphere, its circumference consisting of intelligence and will. It revolves through incorporeal regions, but its center, being the life and substance, is independent of any pivot. God, Angels, Souls Again, observe in this transparent circle of your mind, as in a mirror, and by observing reach everywhere in the world, and everywhere outside the world, the spherical intellect and the intelligible sphere, whose center is everywhere, since it penetrates right through the universe, but whose circumference is nowhere, since it extends boundlessly beyond the universe. Look, see the divine form, the fount of all forms, the one form and the form of all forms. See that the form presenting itself everywhere to all minds, especially those that are pure like mirrors. Mark how the God of gods pulsates with light. Besides him, there is no true God. Here abounds the eternal goodness of the good, completely free from evil. Here shines the immeasurable light of lights, sun to all other minds, just as the stars turn to the sun so do the angels turn to him. Just as the moon turns to the sun, so do souls everywhere turn to him. The Immortality of Souls The everlasting rays of this eternal sun are the minds of men, enveloped by the dark cloud of the body. But they turn back towards the sun, if they will through reason and love. Indeed, they spring back to that sun, just as they originally sprang forth from it. Therefore, since they can flow back to their sun at any time once all impediment has been removed by contemplating and loving rightly, they undoubtedly flowed for forth from it without impediment and clearly everlasting, being without question next to the eternal itself. They reveal their immortality most clearly when they are of value mortal things, as nothing, especially when weighed against the eternal. Moreover, they recognize what is immortal as immortal, and they realize immortality itself, that is God, through the very principle of immortality in unshakable proof. The Providence of God God provides first and foremost for those who see the all-seeing God. If God is the cause of all things, above all things, as he certainly is, then indisputably he is all things. If he is totally single, as his supreme power shows, then in him there is no difference between seeing and being, because he is all things. He easily sees all things in himself. If he is the highest good, which no one doubts, then in him to see is to provide. That is why by seeing everything, he provides perfectly for all without exception, but principally for those minds which see him in every single thing and worship him above all things. Fate and Free Will but let us now return to the subject of our destiny, that God of gods, beside whom there is no true God. He alone has bestowed on me a mind, a mind which transforms itself into God as it wills. Capricorn, at God's command, has added a body, the shadow of the transparent mind, while Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, has imparted spirit, the bond between mind and body. My guiding spirit from the company of the angelic thrones 
has ruled and directed me in so far as I have obeyed God. I used to live among mortals, forever moving between toil and glory. As usually happens, the ardent desire for power brought toil, but unparalleled majesty and incomparable magnanimity brought glory. At last, through exceptional devotion to God and mercy towards men, I flew back to my celestial homeland, as though on these two wings, led by my guiding spirit. Here, happily restored to my Father, the Father of all, I lead a blessed life in some ways similar to that of the thrones which are especially adorned to the sphere of Saturn. The Celestial Paradise Here among spirits innumerable, who feed upon ambrosia and nectar, we are granted a couch on the feasts of the gods. Here, even though it appears that each time his own special star, it is only by particular rays that the universe is open and clear to each individual if he so wills. O oh, blind men, you are under the gross air. Think that you see heaven and the stars from earth. Just as fish think similarly under swimming the swirls of the ocean waters. And how your ridiculous opinion deceives you. For fish on the seabed do not see heaven but water. Not the pure light of heavenly bodies but faint, dark images of them in the muddy water. The same happens to you, wretched men, under the gross air, and yet you marvel at the heavenly bodies which you have already turned into earth. As the light of day is superior to the darkness of night, as the circumference of a circle is larger than its center, so much brighter and greater are the ethereal bodies to us than to you. What shall I say of the innumerable host of stars unknown to you? What of the wonderful variety and order of their movements unrecognized by you? What of the ineffable sweetness of that harmony reflected by the diverse movement of the spheres and by the harmonious balance of all celestial bodies? The Super Celestial Paradise but why have I been singing the praises of the celestial world to you for so long? For this world is nothing but a shadow of the super celestial, just as the earthly is of the celestial. O oh, true light above the ether, light so true that it cannot be described. O oh, truth, wonderfully shining above heaven, shining forth so marvelously, that no one can ever experience the full wonder of it, since it is wondrously surpasses wonder itself. Here, my son, here alone, I say, one lives the truest, clearest, best, and most joyful life, where all life is nothing but truth, clarity, goodness, and joy in its fullness. Here in that immeasurable light of lights, we see all the lights of the ideal forms. And in those lights, we see clearly behold everything as it really is. Just like someone seeing the sun, all the rays emanating from it, and in all those rays, the individual colors which are created from them. My son, I would like to show you here and now very many more things which are infinitely greater and more beautiful than heaven. But the present frailty of your human eyes prevents me. So to avoid your being inevitably dazzled by too much splendor, no further shall I reveal the light of the divine and the infinite realm of the sun, the light that surpasses wonder. Suffice that it has shown how Blessed your Alfonso, and how blessed you yourself will be only if you are willing. Therefore, dearest son, give thanks now to your father's happiness, 
Give thanks to the full. Rejoice in your own happiness. Now be happy and hear your destiny on earth, which till now you have not heard. Destiny and Freedom The same Father who created mine for me and for all others created it for you also. For he alone brings forth mind. He alone creates it anew. By mind alone he is recognized, and he alone feeds mind and fills it. That body of yours, though, was fashioned for you by Ares, leader of the stars, while Mars, lord of Ares, kindled that fiery spirit. An angel has also been assigned to you by God as guardian over your life. A spirit from the number of those who rightly belong to the chorus of the angelic virtues. Yet you, my son, live continually between toil and glory. It is unbending Saturn who threatens you with toil and danger, while far-seeing Mercury, following the sun, promises glory. Severity from Saturn can sometimes obstruct you, but from Mercury, a marvelous foresight comes to your aid. The Nature of Saturn and Mars Two of the planets in particular continuously devise perils for men, Mars and Saturn. However, each of these, as experience teaches you, usually spares those under him. Saturn, I mean, generally does not injure those under Saturn, nor Mars those under Mars. Certainly, was once a companion of Saturn. Whenever I showed compassion to my own people, that is, those under Saturn, Saturn favored me. But whenever I did not show them compassion, Saturn never favored me at all. Therefore, my Ferdinand, companion of fiery Mars, if you wish your reign to prosper, spare your own people. All of the peoples, those who are not especially your own, are shown to you by that fiery quality of Aries, with whom both Leo and Sagittarius are in accord. So treat all the sons of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius as your brothers. Go beyond this, pardon, cherish, serve many people also, if you will. But, do you not want to know who my people are? Why, they are those ruled by Capricorn or Aquarius, the abodes of Saturn. Advice on Conduct Furthermore, be wholly content with the territories you have. Believe me, fate will give you many more gifts, and greater ones, far beyond any one by force. Men you pursue with violence will certainly flee from you, yet if ever they gain power, which God forbid, they will perhaps put you to flight. But those you treat with kindness will willingly follow and serve you. You will conquer successfully only if you conquer through kindness. You will rule free from all troubles only while you rule willing subjects. It will be easy for you to move everyone wherever you wish if you yourself are never moved. As you know, the supreme intelligence, unless compelled, never enters into a struggle with a deceitful fortune. When Mars rages most, fortune wields the most power and deceives with the greatest ease. A prophecy. So far it has been sufficient to have advised you, my dear son, far-sighted though you are, with fatherly love. But now I should like briefly to give you, my fortunate son, a few words of prophecy. I see that you will quickly carry off my advice, for I had foreseen that you would do this through your own foresight long before I foretold it. 
In peace alone a splendid victory awaits you, a victory full of triumphs without danger, in victory, tranquility, in tranquility, a reverence of worship of Minerva. Now listen closely, I beseech you. Listen, Ferdinand, without any reservation, to what follows. If you will at once give pride of place in your crown to the three jewels of the divine faith, hope, and charity, then surely the three graces will shower their favors upon you from the third heaven, where the angelic hosts fill the gracious sphere of Venus with beauty. They will drive the three furies far from your borders and placate with three fates. When you have lived through the two circuits of Saturn, Ferdinand, and the sun is favorably aspected to Jupiter and the moon in conjunction with Jupiter, or rather when the Almighty God grants his supreme gift, then more than ever your suns shine with the presence of the splendor of their whole noble power. After you have fulfilled your years as a father, and I have added several circuits of Mars, the number of which is rightly known only to us above, you yourself will at last seek again your heavenly country. You will be guided by your guardian spirit, and will come on the same wings on which your father Alfonso returned here. Devotion to God and mercy to men. Here, just like angelic virtues, chief source of light for the sphere of Mars, you will taste blessed eternity and, tasting that, you will rejoice. The wonderful bliss in our true home. O oh, wondrous bliss, O oh, bliss beyond compare, when deeply within the infinite good of good things we rejoice infinitely in all that is good. How perfect the bliss we enjoy here, where each of us, however great or small, is holy bliss and the bliss is total. I would most willingly sing to you now, my son, with the angelic voice of thrones, of the wonderful sweetness which with we are filled with our own true home, but I fear that in comparison with such great sweetness here, the whole life on earth would afterwards seem not only most bitter to you, but the very source of bitterness. So out of compassion, I will restrain myself so as not to make my son grieve more bitterly over the sad fate of mortals than other men do but so that you may one day receive the full blessing of immortality. Never take pleasure in things which die, but rather put them to use, and find true joy at any time. Find it always in the truth alone. The Ascent of Souls Now farewell, my sweet son. Be happy and live a fruitful life. Listen, I am now being called back to the ethereal realm by voices. Do you not hear them? They are the voices of the archangels who grace the sphere of Mercury. But before you can farewell, let your spirit, I entreat you, embrace mine as long as I have since embraced yours. May you always of your own free will be with me, my son since I am with you beyond to the end of time. But look, Ferdinand, look up and see a miracle, born on the wings of a seraph. I fly back to the sublime realm of the thrones in a single moment, and yet, rather like a ray of light, I do not leave your home. From the heights of heaven, farewell again.